Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to making a bullet hell game in Game Maker. So, as of right now, we've got ourselves what looks an awful lot like just a prototype that you would whip together for something in about six hours, and more or less that's what it is, I want to say that's about how long it's been so far. And, uh, today I'd like to start, uh, enhancing the graphics just a little bit, because I think we've gotten to the point where it's, uh, mechanically, like, it, the mechanics make sense, or at least they're, they they work, they don't break. Um, I will fine-tune them later, of course, and it's uh, it's about time to start start dealing with visuals. So, I did say that, um, initially I, I said this was going to be a 2D game, because I would like to know what it's like to make a 2D game, and then I realized that I'm just incapable of making a 2D game, so I'm going to go a similar route to, uh, to Tower Defense. Oh, next wave spawn, that's nice. I'm gonna take a, a similar route to Tower Defense and um, and have some 3D stuff in this game. Uh, it's gonna be pretty much a, a similar visual style, uh, low poly, vertex color, uh, Kenny.nl free game assets that I can uh, use and put on GitHub without worrying about someone sending lawyers after me. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be top down. It's gonna be 2D. I won't be using a perspective pro projection. I will be using an orthographic projection, so it will look 2D. But uh, we're gonna be using 3D uh, 3D shapes and shading and and all that. Because that's what I am. That's what I am used to making, and I want to uh, not have to spend a lot of time like trying to make pixel art or trying to um, bribe my friends into making pixel art for me or that kind of thing. So I'm gonna get out of there. I'm going to open up a program which is called the uh, DDD Mesh Converter uh, and or Penguin. Um, this is a this is a little thing that I maintain for converting um, files from like Wavefront OBJ that you make in like Blender or something, and uh, spitting out a vertex buffer that you can just load into Game Maker without having to parse an OBJ. Uh, it also has some other bells and whistles that I've added over the, the months and years. Um, I'm going to open up the, um, just uh, one of one of several uh, 3D model collections that uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kenny has made. And I'm gonna just drag them into uh, drag them into this program. And if you want to play around with this yourself, as always, I do like to advertise this around occasionally. I will have a link to this itch.io page down in the description of the video, right? And let's uh, let's start with some trees. I feel like I'm gonna mostly be doing like trees and rocks and flowers, and I'm not gonna have a lot of other stuff, uh, not a lot of other scenery as we had in um in Bombardier. But let's start with a uh, tree oak. I won't worry about, like, the light and the dark and the fall colors and whatever, because I can actually, um, modify the colors in the editor now. Uh, tree... tree fat, that's like a, a squatter, rounder one. Tree detailed is always a fun one. Um, tree default, I guess. We'll start with these four. And... Let's see, they're gonna be way squashed the heck down by, like, the world origin. Um... And they're gonna be they're gonna be oriented with Y as the up axis because most things like Y is the up axis except for me actually I'm, I might want that Y to be no I won't okay we're gonna be doing a top down view you'll see what I uh, you'll see what I have in mind soon enough but yeah that that'll do it um this is what they look like and uh let's uh. Pick some other things. We'll uh, we'll also say stump square detail. That sounds fun. Stump square detailed wides and tree stumps, um, as one does. Stump old. So let's see what the tree stumps look like. Okay, I think I would like mostly like trees. At least different different levels will have different themings, of course. But I think I would like mostly trees. Um, I can. <clears throat> Of course, play with the uh, the odds of an of a particular object spawning. Uh, there's also like grasses and ferns and stuff, right? Mushroom red, mushroom red tall. Um, grass leaves. I remember spamming a lot of these down. In. I think that's like a a terrain tile. I remember spamming a lot of these down in Bombardier. And also, I can, uh, again, of course, play with the colors later on. Red, purple, yellow, A, B, C. Alright. 
All right, so there's our there's our uh, there's our plants, and if I wanted to, I could uh, I could drag these in again and make like. Oh, I had a couple things selected. I play with the coloration, so instead of having, for example, a uh, red flower, I could make this like a a yellow one. That might be a little. Let's make it a little oranger. Like that, maybe. Yeah, that's not bad. And I'm gonna more or less give these other clones the same uh, same color. I should probably name them to something a little more helpful than flower red too, especially when they're like orange. All right, I think that'll do it. So we've got like the the base the base color trees and the base color like flowers and stuff like that and some other things, and we also have um, the yellow flowers and the uh, a couple, a couple of recolors of the various types of trees, which I think I can, uh, I can work with. Uh, some, some white flowers, some, uh, some pink flowers. I thought about making like a, a sky blue flower, except there's not like, that's not a common color to see on flowers out in the wild, so I decided against it. Anyway, let's see. Is there anything else I want to do here? I don't think so. At least not for now. So I'm going to, uh, let's say select all. I'm going to. I accidentally reset the transformation. Um, 64, a scale of 64 is more or less um, what I was uh, envisioning for like the scale of things. And that seemed to have messed with the, uh, the surface normals a little bit. Um, so let me... Uh... All right, much better. That's probably a bug I should look into fixing is when you, uh, when you um, mess with the, the rotation or scale, sometimes the, the normals get messed up. Uh, we can rotate the uh, the up axis, and now I um, let's export these to vertex buffers. So none of these have textures. So to save on a little bit of space, I'm going to get rid of the like the texture attribute. Um, the position normal color is fine. That's 28 bytes per vertex. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much space this is going to be. I'm not sure how many uh, vertices are um, like in total in all these things. Uh, so I can, um, I'm going to go with that vertex format. That's going to be the vertex format that I draw things with in the game. And uh, export. That should be fine, right? Can I save these in the same folder that they, like, started in? Oh, you know what? I'm, where I should save these is a uh, game maker. Um, I should probably make a workspace folder in the project folder to, uh, to keep everything. Uh, let's, uh... Let's save everything here, and that should is that gonna is that gonna like correctly deal with the um the sub meshes like the the different material types with the colors and textures aren't like really applicable here, but I don't remember if I made it that way. Anyway, let us go into the uh, the project in Explorer and the workspace folder. Did this save everything? It looks like this did save everything as a single vertex buffer. I think, I hope. I'd like that to be the case, and this was a uh, out of my, from my curiosity. That's about three hundred forty kilobytes or so. So we can uh, we can put this we can start moving this into the into the game. So if I were to go into data files, uh, there is the like the text the language file. That's um, TBA as I as I put more of the like the base English text in the game. Um, I'm going to make another folder. I'm going to call this. Um, Let's just call it 3D. I, have I been calling it like meshes or something in the, in the Bombardier game? I might have called it that. Sick of consistency. And we can um we can we can put in subfolders for different like level types. This can be like woodlands. Like the woodland type, uh the woodland type levels. That's fine, right? And we can uh we can get started. So I should probably start committing changes too. Next, I'm going to want to actually load this into the game. So, uh, where is the, like, the world object? Game. World. What did I call it? Um, this is terrible. Game controller. Okay. And we're going to, like, before we, before we do all the other stuff, uh, we're going to say vertex format begin. Vertex format add position 3D, vertex format add normal, 
vertex format add color. And uh, we can say uh, format is just going to be, because there's only going to be one, equals vertex format end. All right. And then we can, um, that's going to be our vertex format. We can load in all of the, like, all of the things. And uh, to do that, let's say self dot meshes is going to equal like an object, just a JSON object. This is just going to be a container for all the things we're going to load in. Um, self dot meshes is going to be equal to that. I will categorize, categorize, I will categorize them by type. So like the woodlands is going to be its own object. And then, um, I might, I might move this out to like a, a function call later or something like that. So we don't just have a massive code in the game controllers create event, but, uh, file find first, uh, the mask is going to be, uh, this is just going to be a, a, um, a helpful function for iterating over files in a directory. Uh, the mask is going to be meshes forward slash woodlands forward slash um, star dot vbuff, which should be good. And the attributes are going to be fa. Is there an fa none? There is not. So I'm just going to make that zero. This is like, this is kind of a, a direct correspondence to the uh, the Windows API file find functions and you can you can specify a mask for like read only files or whatever but you almost never need to do that and when you're doing game dev and then um, file fi find close and then in the middle uh, file find close is of course like the DS list destroy or the vertex buffer destroy or whatever functions. Uh, we can loop over every uh, every vertex buffer file in that folder. I think I'm I'm pretty sure I did something like this in Bombardier when I like loaded all the the 3D files for the the primitive mesh ed the primitive map editor. Um, while this is going to return a file, so we can save our file name is going to be equal to that, and then uh, while file name is not equal to I think empty string. Okay, thinking this through, uh, making sure I remember how this works. I uh, I want to say that if um, if you hit an empty string, that means that you have found the last file in the folder that you're searching in. Uh, we can load the file, so our buffer is going to be equal to buffer create. Uh, no, it's not going to. It's going to be equal to buffer load. Uh, the file name is going to be the file name. Uh, we are going to convert this to a vertex buffer, so vertex create buffer from buffer. Uh, the source buffer is going to be that. The source format is going to be self dot format. All right, that's this one. Should be a 3D position, a normal color, and that's it. And uh, we can insert this into self dot meshes dot woodlands. Uh, this is going to be the uh, the struct accessor. Um, uh, the key is just going to be the, the file name. File name name. And the uh, the value is going to be the vertex buffer, and then when we're done with that, buffer delete the uh, the raw the raw data buffer, and we're going to then um, file name is going to be equal to file find next. Okay, so that should allow us to loop over every every one of the vertex buffer files in that folder, right? Right. And if I were to run the game now, it should at the very least not crash. That'll be a good place to start. It crashes. Uh, the specified buffer does not exist. And why is that? C failed to open file. Failed to open. F help. Failed to open file. Flower pink a color. Color red. Dot vbuff. Okay. Um, are you actually? Did I not notice? Pink B color red pink. Okay, so it, it did try to save all the um, the sub meshes individually. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna manually combine these, and that that ruined the vertex color. Okay. All right, so I've gone and done that. Um, since I uh, I do like my main motivation for making this thing was that I like I use it. 
as you can see, I've used it in uh, both of these games that I've done on, on YouTube and also for other things. And uh, I think the next feature that I might want to add is like a way to do all of that, like baking vertex color and combining the different material submeshes in like in a, in a bulk operation. Um, I actually thought I already had the first one, but apparently I forgot to add that. So I will be, I will be doing that. And next, uh, let me just like re-export all of these, right? Export them all as vertex buffer, and that should, uh... Yeah, okay, that, that did export all of the, all the different files as, like, single files. And it seems to have taken up a little bit more space than last time, which is interesting. We're about, a, we're at about 500 kilobytes this time. Not sure why that would be. It should be the same number of vertices. Oh well. So let me uh, let me go and and correct this. And if I were to uh, if I were to come back here, so the error message, uh, it was trying to load a, a file that was for one. And I forgot that file find first did not return the full file path, only the. Uh, the file name. We can we can load the file with the file path, and and now all right, the game didn't crash, which is good. I don't see any like buffer errors out in the console. That's fine. Okay, let me uh one let me like unbreak all of these commits. All right, much nicer than loading an OBJ, right? OBJs kind of suck. Like they're useful to have as a as a exchange format between different programs and stuff like that, but trying to parse them kind of sucks because there's very little standardization. Like there is an OBJ spec, but a lot of programs just kind of do whatever they want with it. Anyway, so now that we're doing this, we can... How about in the draw event? Where's the draw event? Oh, you know what? Um... All the, ob all the other objects in the game kind of just like draw themselves. All right, so in the, uh, we'll, we'll make a draw event and we'll handle everything else um, as, as they come. Uh, all of the other, uh, the other object types, I think are gonna wanna be made invisible from here on out and we will draw them with like a width statement. Um, if I can make the font a little bigger. The draw event. Um, is there a like a named sub event of draw? Anyway, we can we can do that. We can say with uh, I believe bullet. Bullets are not technically an entity. Oh, they all inherit from level object. So I can just say with uh, level object uh, perform your draw event like that. I actually won't do that. I will, uh, let's see, if I want something to draw first, it has to have a higher depth, right? So I will, I will actually use depth, which is something that I have scarcely little experience actually doing. And the, uh, the game controller object can have a depth of, all right, it's got a, a depth of like 1500. And like Z depth distance from camera doesn't really matter as long as it gets drawn because ortho cameras. Um, but I can say, um, let's say if our mesh is going to be equal to, uh, and this is going to be temporary, so it's okay that it's going to be like a code disaster. Um, Self.meshes.woodlands uh, struct accessor, a variable struct names, get names, get names. S-T-R-U-C-T get names uh, self dot meshes dot woodlands. I told you this was going to be a disaster. Um, and this is going to return an array. We'll just draw whatever's at index like zero. Hey. All right, that'll be good enough. That's going to be a vertex buffer. Vert. Hello. Vertex submit mesh PR triangle list and the texture is going to be negative one and I can do this in maybe like a loop
and we can draw like the first like ten, the first ten meshes in this uh, in the struct, and it's not gonna be um, it's not gonna be like alphabetized. It's not gonna be the order that they were loaded in. Uh, structs are stored in a random order. They're they're hash maps. Um, I will also want of our uh, matrix. It's gonna be equal to matrix build. Uh, the, X, Y, Z, I'm going to, um, say 32 plus 32. Actually, since they're like 64 wide, most of them, 64 plus 64 times I, uh, 64 on the Z, on the Y, zero on the Z, uh, no rotation, no scaling to speak of, uh, matrix set. And then... we can reset that matrix later. And this should at least draw them. Um, the default game maker shader, as long as it has a color or a texture, it should be able to draw. And we do have indeed something. All right, um, it's doing its best with the information it has. I believe it does want a texture and it's like totally unsure what to do with that one. But those, are, those things are drawing. Um, not sure what objects they are. Oh, you know what? Um, they were all drawing the same, the same vertex buffer. Okay, so some of those at least uh, look like trees. Some of them, I think, that one's grass, I think. This one, I think, is like a flower. This one might be a mushroom. All right, they're drawing. That's great. It's terrible, but it's also great. Um, next, I will go and start doing shader stuff. Uh, let's go into graphical stuff. This is taking longer than I was really wanting it to. Um, I was out a little bit last week with a little bit of a sore throat and I was hoping that I could get through this quickly and before I like potentially aggravate it, but whatever, who cares? Um, SHD, I'm going to call it SHD underscore world. So the vertex format, uh, should ideally match the vertex format that I'm giving it. So we've got a normal, I think it's like trying to like take the 3d normal and turn it into a. I don't know, a, a color value or something weird like that. Um, so position, normal color, uh, text chord, we don't need the varying, uh, just the, the varying for color. Um, I, I am a fan of in, of making this line a little bit more, more clean and neat. And the only thing we need to pass to the, uh, to the fragment shader is the color. I will put like vertex, vertex lighting in here eventually, but not now. Uh, GL frag color is gonna be equal to just V underscore V color because we're not sampling a texture. And that should uh, that should at least have things appearing as the right color. And it is not because I am not actually setting the shader. Shader set, shader underscore world up here, shader reset at the bottom. I should be able to get through this whole thing without like messing with a uh, without touching a camera. I should just be able to use the default, there we go. Uh, the default like game maker cameras. Uh, we seem to be, um, we seem to be upside down. Um, we also seem to be at like half the scale that I thought we were gonna be, so I might actually wanna scale them up. Uh, let's, uh, let's set the scaling to negative one. Um, actually, let's set the scaling to like two, two, and two, and then 64 plus like 128 times I. Okay. Just looking at this, um, we seem to be... I feel like, okay, I know what's going on. All right, we're looking at them head on. We're looking at them like from the correct perspective. Um, but I forgot to turn on the depth buffer. Uh, GPU set um, Z test enabled. We want that to be true. GPU set Z write enabled. We also want that to be true. And then when we, uh, when we go back into 2D mode at the end, 
We can turn them back off because that is just a little bit of extra processing that we don't need to do. And all right, we are we are correctly drawing our player like over over the things the uh, like the bottoms of the tree aren't being drawn over the top of the tree because that's weird. Uh, we can see the flowers from overhead. That's fine. All right. Um, I might tilt them like five degrees over the over the y axis. I'm considering it, but for now I'll leave it as it is. Uh, next, I would like, and something resembling the world shader, uh, I would like to have something resembling a directional light. Um, right now, I'm just gonna const light, uh, const vec3 light direction is gonna be equal to normalize uh, vec3, and I can make this like negative one, negative one, negative one, and um, instead of, uh, instead of doing anything like fancy with any fancy lighting, we can just, uh, we can just modify the underscore V color because it's going to be a very simple, uh, very simple calculation. And we can say, uh, V underscore V color is going to be equal to the input color, uh, multiplied by in, I'm going to want the, like the world transform of the normal. So this is going to be the transform to normal. Uh, we want the zero as the homogeneous coordinate in normal um we're gonna want this dotted against probably normalize that just to be on the safe side we're gonna want that dotted against the uh light underscore direction and we're probably going to want to take the max of 0 0.0 0 0 and that value and let's uh, let's break this up a little bit shall we let's say uh the world space normal is going to be Vec4 world normal is going to be that. I am missing a parenthesis, I think. Um, float m dot l is going to be equal to that. The world normal dotted against the light direction, and v underscore v color is going to be input color multiplied by the maximum of zero and m dot l. Okay. That should give us a rudimentary light. Uh, we have a shader compiler issue. Do you not like const vector light direction equals normalize this? This is a compile time constant. That should be fine. Is it like, is that actually not fine? Um, oh, you know what? This needs to be a... Uh, Vec3, let's take the x, y, z, because the homogeneous coordinate isn't important uh, once you're actually doing the m.l. All right, now it compiled. Um, I, uh, I I guess it didn't like, like it, it didn't like that constant. I Maybe it's an HLSL that I've done that before. I don't remember. In HLSL, you have to do like static const whatever, and it's a little bit weird because HLSL... Um, all right, so one, I see that the uh, the alpha is also being affected. Uh, huh, easy to forget. V underscore V color with the U dot A is going to be equal to in color dot A. Or you know what I could do? Yeah, let's just do it that way. That's one line of code. Uh, also, uh, the ambient light is like black, so if I can make the ambient light like 0.3, that'll make the uh, the unlit sides of things a little bit brighter. Maybe a little bit brighter still than that. All right, that's fine. Okay, so we've got the shader. We've got a, uh, actually, I think I like 0.3 better. Yeah, um, we've got the shader. In the future, I will have like an actual something resembling a 3D model for both the foes and me. Um, I will uh, probably not be doing like any skeletal animation for my player. I, I mentioned having it like a dragon self-insert thing and flapping its wings or whatever. I'll probably just do like frame animation for, um, a character and export like a strip of OBJs or something like that. But, um, let's see. I'm very surprised that I can't have a compile time constant that's just this. Or right, whatever. Uh, let's make the, let's make the ambient light value a, uh, something other than a magic number. So that's going to be the shader. Um, if I really wanted to, I could parameterize the light direction past that isn't past that in as uniform. I could make light ambient a uniform, but uh, that's going to be a problem for future me. I have not decided if I want that yet. 
Um, I think I'm going to, uh... For some reason, that messed with, like, the order of the files and the included file structure. I'm going to commit some changes. Uh, let's say... Added the world shader. And I probably won't touch it from here on out. There should be an extremely lightweight game, uh, considerably more so than Bombardier was. Um, there's going to be, like, more by way of things such as, I think, particle effects in the game. I will be using the Game Maker default built-in particles, I think. Uh, but um, on the 3D side, it's going to be a lot lighter than, um, than Bombardier was. So next, uh, I can... I can arrange these into something that's gonna like scroll down the screen. And I could make another like world object that is going to like be an object and it's gonna have an XYZ position and all that, but I don't really think I need to. I think for gameplay things, that's okay. That makes sense. I think the compromise that I've reached in my head is that like for gameplay things, uh, the need to participate in the step event and whatever, having game maker objects makes sense. But for, um, just like visual things in the background, just a struct containing an XY and like a rotation is fine. I think I might actually do that next time. Um, this ended up taking a lot longer than I thought it would. Uh, fortunately, my, my sore throat doesn't seem to be bothering me um, today after a, almost an hour of doing this, which is good. But I, um, I do need to give someone a, a ride from a certain train station uh, in about 10 minutes. So I don't want to commit to anything that's going to take a lot longer than this. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to move this into a function uh, is going to be the, the last thing that I do here because I'm going to want to do this for different like biome level types uh, later on. So if I were to go into group underscore like misc miscellaneous. Yeah, sure. Let's call this function um, load uh, biome load like it's not really a level load level meshes we can we can call it that uh, it's going to take an argument the argument is going to be um folder uh it's going to take another argument the, that argument is going to be actually no i'll have it return an object um i will i will need to give it the uh the vertex format though okay and i can cut that i can paste it into this function definition and instead of saying like all this hard coded we can say file find first folder plus that all right i'll give the i'll give it the folder with like the trailing forward slash we can load the buffer that's in the folder plus the file name um var output can be just an empty struct uh we can say output we're going to feed the vertex buffers into the like into the output struct over here there is apparently that is a full colon not a semicolon and then when we're done return output all right that's like that's don't repeat yourself right and then uh we can say uh woodlands can be what was it level load level message load level meshes um meshes forward slash woodlands forward slash and the vertex format can be self dot format and then of course later on we'll have like desert and pirate and ocean things and we can um we can load them in very easily okay so if i were to do this now uh, we should have pretty much the same thing all right awesome and I think I'm going to call it here. So I did not get as much um, as I as I wanted to done today, but it was it was decent. So every room gets a background layer. Didn't do that. Uh, backgrounds are comprised of 3D objects drawn through an ortho camera. Uh, we actually don't even need an ortho camera because I can just draw it through the default like projection because um, we're not moving the camera around or anything. Each level has its own list of background objects it may draw from. Uh, basic 3D lighting shader we did. Um, separate resolution scales for background and foreground. Okay, that might actually merit a, um, its own 3D camera. But you know what? If if this game is just super lightweight and if it runs fine on a Raspberry Pi, um, without even without even needing to mess with that, I I might not even bother with that. I'll do some stress testing later on once the other like things are in the game. 
Um, just, uh, I forgot to mention this earlier, but worth noting, uh, there are, in, in Bombardier, I did, uh, call out triangles that weren't facing the camera that you would never see, uh, things that were facing backwards. Uh, since this is a top-down, a top-down game, uh, we too have triangles that will never be seen. In fact, we have a lot of them, but I'm not going to try and call them out because I think it's just not going to be worth it. Um, the, uh, the individual vertex submits are going to probably be the bottleneck for performance. In, on the 3D side, and I won't be fusing all of the like level objects together because they'll be scrolling, and that just won't be worth it computationally. So even though like the bottom of the trees and even even the uh, the faces that are just facing backwards and off to the sides and whatever will never be seen, I'm just gonna leave them in. Um, I'm probably gonna get asked about that eventually. That's the answer. It's just the trade-off isn't worth it. Uh, that's another feature that I could add to this uh, to this editor is uh, automatic culling of triangles that are facing a certain direction. I might want to write that down after I finish. Anyway, I think next time I will definitely be doing this. And then again, I will I will start to I'll create models for the foes and the player and all that on my own time, but I will uh, try to get them into the game after that. So my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. We did not make a whole ton of progress on on this uh, on the sprint today, but that's okay. Uh, there was more to it than I thought there was going to be. I uh, could have broken this down into somewhat uh, smaller steps, but whatever. Uh, next time we will have scrolling level backgrounds, and the game will start to look like an actual game that will actually be like somewhat pleasant to play. Um, if you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. Let me actually commit these changes, which I said I was going to do and then didn't do. Okay, uh, look for the 0 0.18 release. That is going to be what we did today. If I were to push these changes out, if I were to create a release right here and now, that'll be one less thing for me to forget about later. Um, choose tag. All right, that's cool. Um, I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, look for the links to that that can be found in all the usual places. Uh, you can see some fun things like your uh, your name in the credits at the end of every video, and about once a month I try to post a preview of my future plans, and if you wanted to pledge I would definitely appreciate it. Uh, otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one let's make a game like this, and one, like, tutorial tutorial. Why do I even call them that? I have no idea. Um, if you would like the, uh, if you would like the 3D model conversion program that I have, Link to the itch.io page can also be found in the video description. I might, by the time you're watching this, uh, have implemented the, uh, the things that I said it would be nice to have uh, in this video. Um, in case you want to make something in this style for yourself, and um, if you want to be able to work with a similar workflow that I have. Like, figuring out like your, your 3D workflow in Game Maker is an entire subject of videos that I kind of would like to make someday, but it's not going to be a lot of programming, so I have no idea how I'm actually going to do something like that, but whatever. I hope you all found that interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Gunnar Clovis, Kiexi, Posho, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, Then Nothing Happened, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end like this, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.